Okay guys, this is the last box set I'll be reviewing this evening. The Proliferation Cycle box, uh, which is full of mechs that are more or less deprecated because they are old and crap. Uh, these guys were basically Age of War, uh, not Age of War, but early Star League designs post Mackie in some cases, but uh, not by much. Uh, basically, each one of these represents a great house trying to do its best with the technology they lifted slash stole from the Star League. So, let's crack this bad boy open and again. One, two, three, four, five. So, seven mechs, which is actually kind of impressive. So, uh, let's crack this bad boy open. And then, so first and foremost, yes. We do, in fact, get a Mackie. So we get the Mackie 5S, the Mackie 9H, the Amir, two versions of the Amir, the Battle Axe, the Gladiator, the Icarus 2. The Capellan Fire Bee. And uh, the Clan Tech Coyotal, which is the first first ever Omni Mech. So. All right, so that's that. You got your cards. You got Charles Kincaid, Gorka Torrente, Moira Tangera Forius Steiner, Orionis Birch. John Gordon, Lucille Maris Daughter, Xanth Derview, Alex Keller, Prim Fen Fendanis, Krina Quain, Prim Parakova, Porfirio Filardo, and Ekaterin Gruber. And just some dude named, some chick named Monsa. Or it might be a girl. I don't know. Is that a boy or girl name? I don't know. And then you get one of these. Now, I'm not going to flip this over because I'm not a dummy. Uh, on the back of this, there is actually code specifically where you can download a copy of the Proliferation Cycle book, which is an anthology series of basically how each individual uh, great house and clan got their hands on either battle mech or omni mech technology. So just, I had to be really careful that I didn't eat my words and made sure that I've just showed that to everybody. So there's that. So there's that. Let me just organize some of my paperwork here. <laughs> Very intersphere heavy. Not a whole lot of clan stuff to go around this uh, this uh, wave of releases. Although you could technically argue that Snords and Regulars were part of Wolf's Dragoons. Uh, I don't know. So first is the Mackie. And this thing is surprisingly hefty. And it's very big and barrel chested and chunky. I don't think I like it more than the Locust Labs version I reviewed a while back. Um, but still, this is, I think this is competent in its own right. And it's got the big bug eyed, the big bug cockpit. So that's going to be fun. And then you have the Battle Axe, which just looks like a look at that face. A face only a mother could love. Yeesh. It's like a... I want to say these are AC-10s? Maybe? They might be PPCs. I don't... Uh, my my Battle X Foo is weak. And then you have the Emir, which is, again, another huge... Another thick boy with a ton of missile launchers. Very spindly, very gangly, awkward-looking mech, which I think is is really good for these types of mechs where they are kind of like the initial run of stuff that you've ever seen out of the inner sphere. And it's like, you want these kind of to look awkward and unfinished in a lot of ways. So, and this is the gladiator, 
which I actually think I, I like the, the best, not because I'm also a part-time uh, Draconis Combine fan, but also because it's just I just like the, the quasi-samurai, the subtle hints, kind of the shingled leg armor, the very, you know, a segmented head section that kind of uh, harks back to Japanese armor samurai design. I like it. It's competent. Then you have the Icarus II. Which, again, uh, I don't know that much about the Icarus. Uh, it's got some big old jump jets, though. Ooh, look at that seam line. Most of these have actually been fairly clean of seam lines. I just, that one's really gnarly. And then you get the, um, the Inner Sphere Fire Bee, which is a Capellan Confederation mech, which is basically all SRM 2s all the time. Uh, hippity hoppity. I hope you like napalm type mech uh which i actually think is really good i love what they did with the cockpit and they made it very uh insect like which is which is appropriate because it's called a fire bee <laughs> and then last but not least you have the coyote coyote i don't know i don't know how you pronounce it but it's got the cockpit right there and you can kind of see the very obvious crew hatch uh, weapon mounts, and since this is a prototype Omnimech, kind of the, a tech demonstrator more or less for Omnimech technology, it, it looks like, okay, you, some, some guy would go in, they would unbolt this and pull it off, and they would drop a new pod on, and then the arms are basically, you know, these big housings that you slot the new weapons into, and you kind of run the ammo feeds into the torso, so this, this, this makes sense, and again, I like the other mechs in this set, very strange, very ungainly looking, uh, which I think works in its favor. Um, so, verdict on this. This one is, I believe, came out to like, like 35 or I think I want to say this was like 40 or $45 uh, retail. Do I recommend it? If you are a fan of the early Star League, uh, Star League era specifically, this is a no-brainer. You know, this is a no-brainer. Even if you're a clanner and you just want to get it for the coyote, for the memes, um, you could buy this box and then part out the rest of the mechs. Yeah, it's worse ideas. Um, worst comes to worst, you get a free, you get a free book and you get, you get it, uh, a bunch of mechs that you don't need that you can... Uh, paint up in whatever colors you want. You can just use them as like paint paint demonstrators. But uh, again, really competent, really good. Really enjoyed this. So um, again, solid three out of five. I don't think I gave the Urban Mech Lance a rating. Urban Mech Lance was four out of five because Urban Mechs always add an extra point of fun, fun factor. But uh, as far as um, the Snords regulars, Three out of five, solid, not required. This, again, solid, not required. Um, it just allows you to kind of expand your play. And the other thing about these mechs is that they also all have iterations that e exist in later in the timeline as well. So it's not like you're shoehorned into doing just the one thing, which I think is good. So, but thanks again to Aries Games and Miniatures for this not sponsorship, totally not sponsored, not whatsoever. Uh, but uh, being the, the first and only place I always go for new Battletech releases, that and this guy has like wall hacks when it comes to mailing stuff. It's ridiculous. So that's pretty much it. I hope you guys have a good evening. Bye.